Hey guys, I just want to do a brief introduction to uh, JavaScript uh, and how to use it and some basic functionality of, uh, of jQuery as well. Uh, we'll. We'll be using both today uh, and this is just a really simple example to show you just sort of uh, the very basic functionality of JavaScript uh, just to sort of give you an idea of, of a better idea of what it is and, uh, and how it's used uh, within your web page. So um, I'm going to start a new HTML document, and uh, this will allow us to start using some JavaScript uh, as soon as uh, what I need to do actually is add uh, a script tag into the head of this document. So you can see the head of my document is here, begins up here and ends down here. Um, I want to uh, add a script tag uh, somewhere in there. I usually put them after the title. So what I want to do is I'll hit enter there and over in my insert panel uh, in Dreamweaver I'll just scroll down and find the uh, script uh, the script button here. So I'll press that and uh, you know if you get this menu just choose script and we're not going to enter anything in here because we, we'll do that in the code view in a second here. Uh, all we want to do is just insert the tag. So you can see we have an empty tag there. And right now we can, uh, now what we can do is uh, start adding some JavaScript code which will be different than uh, CSS or HTML. Uh, this is going to be JavaScript code. Uh, which is sort of a different syntax and style than what, what we've been working with in HTML and CSS. Um, but what we can do is we'll start off with a variable. Uh, and a variable is basically just uh, a, a stored piece of information. Uh, it could be a number or a, a short piece of text or anything like that. Um, and in this case, we'll, we'll make a variable and we'll uh, assign a number to it. Uh, which is a lot less complicated than it might sound. So what we'll do is we'll type x and we'll say x equals and we'll say 200. And um, after we have a line of JavaScript, after every line uh, we need to have a semicolon and that just says that that's the end of that line and uh, you should expect a new line after that. So we've just created a, a, ja a JavaScript variable and now anytime we say x, it's going to know that we mean we just mean 200. So I'm going to um, just hit enter here and do the same thing again. But this time we'll create one called y and we'll say y is equal to 300. So that's a different number. So uh, again I just put the semicolon after that. Now, now what we can actually do with these variables is we can add them together uh, we can manipulate them in different ways, but what we'll do here is we'll create a third variable, and the third variable we'll call z. And in for z, what we're going to do is we'll add the first two variables together. So we'll say z equals x plus y. So that's great. That's three pieces of JavaScript uh, or three lines of JavaScript code. But how do we know that that worked? What, what's that going to do? Like we're not outputting that to anything. And if we launch our web page, um, actually, let, let's save. We'll go ahead and save this right now. Uh, I'll call this test. Um, if I save this and let's say I preview this in Google Chrome, nothing happens, right? It's not doing anything. We didn't tell it to do anything with those variables. So what we need to do, or what we can do is we'll uh, use a function called alert and when it's a function we just uh, we have these brackets here it's a function and with the alert function we'll alert the variable z okay so we're telling it to alert the variable z and what will happen is that we'll uh, send a, a prompt to our web browser once once this is executed so now we're actually doing something with our variable so if I save that again and come back to Google Chrome and refresh this, now we get a JavaScript alert 
that uh, that shows the value of our z variable, which is um, essentially the the first two variables added together mathematically because those were number variables. So that's pretty cool. Um, well, not really. That's not even that cool. Um, but um, let's move along and, and see what else we can do with these variables. Let's, for example, create a variable called name. Okay, and with this name variable, we can uh, we can assign this one uh, a text string, uh, just a, a short piece of text, basically. And anytime we use text, we have to put te the text inside of uh, quotations. Otherwise, it's going to think we're talking about some other variable that we created. Uh, and if that variable obviously doesn't exist, it's going to give you an error and it's not going to work. So it needs to be inside uh, quotes. And inside these quotes, we'll say, uh, we'll say our name, my name is Adam. So I'll just, that's my name. And then, of course, there's semicolon at the end of that. And just below this, we'll, um, we'll create uh, a second variable. We'll call this one phrase. And we'll say this one is equal to uh, something clever like my, my name, name is, okay? And what we want to do is um, append our name, our name variable to our phrase. The way we do that is uh, similar to, to what we did um, in, our, in our first uh, sort of example up here. Uh, we'll use uh, the plus sign. And when we use the plus sign with, with our text strings, it's not going to mathematically add them together because they're not numbers. So what it will do is it will just append the two strings together. So um, because this is, we're talking about a variable here, we won't put it in quotations and we'll just say, my name is name. So this way it will append whatever the, the value of our name variable is, which in this case is Adam. So um, so I'll hit enter after that, and with this one, um, I'll, I'll do the same thing. I'll maybe just copy this uh, first alert function, and instead of alerting Z, this time we'll alert our phrase. Okay, so I'll save that, and I'll refresh my browser again. Okay, so I'll get my first alert, which is the, the two variables added together. And then I'll hit OK, and this uh, it gives you a second alert which says, my name is Adam. Now, there's no space there, so what you would probably want to do is just put a, a little space after that uh, uh, first line of text there. Uh, still inside the quotes, obviously, but um, just so that that gets spaced out. I'm, I'm not even going to bother re-previewing that. Um, so the next thing I want to do uh, is alerts are, uh, are great and all. Uh, not really. They're just annoying. So um, what, what could you actually do with these, with these variables? Al alerts aren't really all that useful. Uh, people don't use them for a whole lot anymore. Um, you'll probably want to do something else with a variable. So um, th there's ways to do this with JavaScript. Um, and uh, just to make life easier in this situation, what we'll actually do is we'll uh, include jQuery uh, to um, to sort of use these variables on our page somewhere, um, and uh, and that that will make thing that will make life a little bit easier for us. Um, so what I'll do is I'm just gonna um, I'm gonna get the the uh, URL for um, jQuery on Google, so I'll just search jQuery. Google, okay, and this Google Libraries API here. Okay, if if I scroll down and find uh, jQuery, I can find the the URL to where jQuery is hosted on Google. Okay, under jQuery here, and um, I'll just copy that. And what I want to do is just above uh, my first uh, script tag, I'll insert uh, another one here. And the source of this is going to be uh, where jQuery is hosted on Google, the, the URL I just copied. So I'll say OK. 
Now, what we could what, what we could try here is uh, to use a, a little line of jQuery um, to uh, to to try and add this onto our page. So uh, when we use jQuery, it we usually uh, it usually starts off with the, the dollar sign there, and then uh, a couple of brackets, uh, which we would pass in. Uh, um, an HTML element that we want to select to do some manipulations on. So let's let's just try this with body. What we can do is inside quotes we'll pass um, basically a, a CSS selector. So we're going to say uh, our any element that that's called body will uh, will want to per, um, perform some manipulations on. And if we put a dot after this and say HTML and an, another set of brackets here. What we can, what, whatever we put inside these, this HTML brackets is whatever we want to change our the the HTML contents of this tag to. So let's say we want to uh, put our, we we want to change the content of our body to our phrase. So we we can. Uh, We'll copy our phrase variable, the, uh, just the word phrase, and we'll put that inside uh, this uh, HTML function. And that will uh, effectively change the content of our HTML for our body tag to this, this phrase. Now, if I save this and try and run it, it will do our normal stuff here. but when when uh, when it comes to the page, nothing's actually happening. So why is that? Why what we we just uh, used basically a, a correct um, jQuery function here. We we did that this properly. The problem is that when this JavaScript uh, executes, it doesn't know that there's uh, a body tag yet. And the reason that 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 is is that um, the page hasn't fully loaded yet. So um, we need to actually execute this somehow when when the page has loaded properly. And the way we do that is with uh, jQuery's document ready function. Okay, so that looks like this. Dot ready, and inside the ready brackets we pass a function, which is basically a set of instructions uh, that uh, whatever we want to do once the document is ready. Um, so something to note about this is that the document is not in uh, quotations because uh, document is just it, it'll know we're referring to the current document. Um, that's essentially a variable that pre-exists in JavaScript. Um, and what we can do is we'll just copy this line of text that we did before and we'll drag that into the document ready. So now um, once the document is ready it will execute uh, our function and this this should work properly this time. So if we uh, preview this once again we'll get our alerts here and now uh, you can see that it uh, changes the HTML content because uh, the page has been fully loaded and um, and it, it knows it's able to find the uh, the body tag now so uh, I, I'm just gonna go back here actually up to my uh, my phrase and uh, I'll I'll just change this line of code really quickly and what I want to do here is I'll say my name is name and we'll just uh, add a little more text here inside quotes and my age is okay and after age we'll we'll pretend uh, our old z variable there is our age okay so we're saying my name is name we we append it using these plus signs and then uh, back in quotes again and my age is and then plus whatever this z variable is which is whatever we did up here so um, let's let's save that and we'll try this one more time ok 
okay it alerts uh, 500 and again it the, our alert should be should be reflect on that variable again my name is Adam and my age is 500 and now uh, because we use that jQuery function my name is Adam and my age is 500 uh, in our uh, HTML content so that's a uh, basic uh, intro to uh, some variables in JavaScript and uh, and how you can use them on your page using jQuery. Um, you can do a lot more with jQuery obviously and this is just one simple function that you can use uh, but uh, the rest is kind of out there for you to explore at this point. Um, I'm not going to get into those right now.